my name is Ian Dudley. And I'm Bryce Cook. Welcome to Eagle Griffin Games' How to Play video for Chariot Race, where we will take you to the Circus Maximus during the height of ancient Rome. The object of the game is to complete two laps around the dusty arena. You will need to speed up along the straightaways, break before the turns, and prepare yourself against your opponent's attacks. Now let's give you all a crash course on how to survive this perilous race. Alright. First, let us set up Chariot Race and show you the different components involved, starting with the game board. There are two sides. Side A is the recommended track for your first game, while side B has dangerous obstacles that should only be used by experienced charioteers. We'll demonstrate a four-player game on side A so we don't wreck our chariots in the very first lap. Next, each player picks a charioteer, then randomly determines starting positions. The small arrows denote where each player will begin the race, first, second, third, continuing up to six. Each player then takes a chariot board in their selected color with the three pointer clips. Your starting attributes are denoted uh, by the darker slots. Also, each player takes a round counter in their color, which signifies how many laps you have remaining. Everyone starts with the double dolphin side up. Here are the attributes each player will have to focus on throughout the race. First, we have speed, which signifies how many board spaces you can move in a round. Your speed also relates to how many dice you can roll on your turn. On the left side of the player board, you'll find hit points, and then lastly, on the top of the player board, you have the Fate Track, where you're able to repair your chariot or manipulate dice you have already rolled. The remaining components are five dice and these gray cubes, which are caltrops that we will go into later in the video. Now let us dive into the flow of Chariot Race, where players take one turn per chariot per round. The first player's turn depends on their position on the game board, so here's the breakdown of the turn phases. First, you may repair your chariot if you have enough fate points. We go into more detail about repairing later. Second is adjusting your initial speed, where your speed cannot exceed your hit points. Third is rolling a number of dice based off of your adjusted speed. Fourth, depending on your dice roll, gain fate points. Fifth, determine your speed for the turn and move your chariot. Finally, if able, attack by either throwing a javelin or dropping a caltrop. Let's get into the flow of play, and let's see who takes their turn first. The player furthest ahead gets to go first, and this is judged by the front line on each game board space. In this example, the green player goes before the red player, because the front line of the space in front of, is in front of the red players. The same is true for the yellow player going before the blue player, thus the turn order for this example is green, red, yellow, and then blue. So to begin Green's turn, let us see if they want to repair their chariot. Now let's say that Green has 8 hit points, and Green still has their starting 3 fate points. It takes exactly 3 fate points to repair up to 3 hit points of damage, even though uh, spending fate points in exchange for hit points is a 1 to 1 ratio, you must always spend 3 fate points for up to 3 hit points. Next, let's adjust Green's initial speed. Since Green is at 10 speed, but only has 8 hit points, Green must then set the pointer on the speed column to 8. If the speed is less or equal to the hit point amount, then there is no need to adjust. Now it's time to roll some dice and see if Fortuna favors you this day. First, check how many dice you were able to roll by comparing your adjusted speed to the dice column. Green here has 8 speed, thus Green can roll 3 dice. After your initial roll, you can choose to re-roll any number of dice once for free. Beyond that free extra roll, you must spend fate track points to manipulate your dice. With two fate points, you can either re-roll any number of dice, or turn one die to the side of your choice. You may never flip a die to Fortuna symbol when spending your two fate points. After rolling your dice, and if you rolled any Fortuna symbols, then you gain one fate point per Fortuna symbol, never exceeding the maximum point amount on the fate track. That's easy. So now let's look to the next phase, movement. You determine your speed starting with your adjusted speed amount plus any dice that adds or subtracts to your adjusted speed. The die faces that change your speed are as follows. This symbolizes your option to either add or subtract one speed point from your speed track, 
and this forces you, forces you to add two speed points but take one hit point of damage. You may never have a speed above the maximum on the speed track and any extra speed points are then lost. As an example, let's say green here started with an adjusted speed of 8 and rolled one of these dice and one of these dice. With that roll, green decides to subtract one speed from the first die but then gains two speed and loses one hit point from the second die. The total speed this turn for green would be 9. After you have factored your total speed, you then advance one space per speed point, and there is no reverse gear on a chariot, so no going backwards. Let's talk about the dangers of movement for a moment. First off, cornering at high speeds is a really bad idea. For each speed point you have over the number displayed on one of the three lanes, you take one point of damage. For example, Green has a speed of 9 and is approaching the corner fast. If Green takes the outside lane, then Green would take 2 points of damage, 4 points if in the middle, and a whopping 6 points if they were in the inner lane. You can mitigate your damage if you roll lane change and adjust accordingly before you hit that turn. You can change a lane once per symbol rolled and at any time during your movement, but remember you always have to advance up the racetrack. All right, up next is ramming. If you move through a space occupied by another chariot, your chariots uh, will ram each other. Both chariots will take two points of damage, and if the player's, uh, the ramming chariot has any speed points left, they'll continue their movement as usual. Uh, the ram chariot will stay in its place. If the ramming chariot uh, ends its movement on the same space, uh, then it's placed on the first unoccupied space behind the rammed chariot the uh, ram chariot stays in its place. The last phase is attacking your opponents. If you roll any attack symbols during the roll phase, then you can choose one of two options. You can either throw a javelin at an opponent up to two spaces away in any direction, or drop caltrips in the space behind your chariot. Both weapons deal one hit point of damage. Javelin damage happens immediately to the intended target and always hits the target. You can drop a caltrip at any time during your movement, and caltrips stay on the racetrack until another chariot runs over it. Now that we've gone over the turn phases, let us look at the end game conditions and other peripheral rules that have not been covered. First, when you wreck, then you are immediately knocked out of the game. Feel free to jeer at your rivals or cheer on your favorite charioteers. Of course, this is all in good fun. If you have not wrecked, then you still have a chance to reach the finish line. After your first lap around the track, you then flip the round marker from the two dolphin side to the one dolphin side. Completing the second lap is passing the finish line. However, after the first player has passed the finish line, then each player behind them in that round's turn order gets one more turn. If several chariots have finished their second lap on the same round, then whoever has moved the furthest distance past the finish line wins. You may still take damage from ramming or javelins, even if you have finished. And if the damage sustained brings a chariot down to zero hit points, then you are wrecked and knocked out of the game. If every chariot has been wrecked except for one player, then that player must still complete two laps to achieve victory. This is usually an easy task to accomplish. Alright, so there you have it, charioteers. A full breakdown of how chariot race works. And we hope you've learned a fair amount before you test yourself in the Circus Maximus. Remember that there are several variants, a modifiable racetrack, and each chariot can be played with unique strengths and weaknesses that we didn't cover in this video. If you have any questions about gameplay, please leave them in a comment below or comment on our Kickstarter campaign. And again, this is Bryce. And I'm Ian. Until next time.